the much loved indian space research organization and department of space had a successful first launch in 2022 by placing india's quality earth observation satellite in space a new beginning as they say for india's space agency i have with me dr s somnath the new chairman of the indian space research organization and the secretary of the department of space uh, doc, dr somnath how was it like to have started 2022 with a successful launch no there is nothing uh, like having a success of a launch pslv has been our breadwinner throughout and it is the one of the most reliable launch vehicle of our era and this c52 did the marvelous work by placing the us rover in the right orbit along with two of his companions uh, the e, the ins2 td as well as the inspire sat1 both were built by very interesting people and we, we the whole campaign was really excellent and we did it on the 14th the early morning and the satellite eos4 is what was much waited for by india so we have it in orbit now how is the year 2022 looking like last two years were highly disappointing see the we always look with great optimism towards uh, the future uh, the 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 most important thing for us is to have the launches no it it raises our spirit no when we have the rocket seeing soaring high in the sky our no enthusiasm and energy to do more grows so that's what i wanted our people in indian space research organization to feel that our launches will happen now uh, the pslvs will fly again in numbers we also want to see the gslv launch also launch uh, whatever the failure happened we come back with the next mission and also the gslv mark 3 launch this year will happen with a, a very interesting the chandrayaan 3 satellite and uh, very importantly in gslv we want to place the navigation satellite replacements which are essential for navi continuation support we also want to have the maiden launch of the sslv to happen this year which is the small launch the vehicle. small satellite launch vehicle which uh, we are developing for the industry to take on and then do it in a commercial level its first launch possibly one more launch this year we so also how many launches are you looking at we did two in 2021 two in 2020 See, Pallavji, Pallavji, you understand that numbers are not the the issue here. See, we we'll do the launch for a purpose. So we look at this year. What is that we need to accomplish in terms of the satellites which need to be put in orbit to serve the user segment, the technology mission that we need to do this year to do certain objectives, uh, including Chandrayaan three and the related to the Gaganyaan, and and we plan the missions. i am not really looking at the statistics so we did 10 we did 20 100 no these are not important numbers will happen when there is a real need and demand you know that's how we, we are a demand driven we, we serve our national interests yeah. so it will happen on time i presume it will happen when there is a so, re- so reason so we are looking at launch of chandrayaan 3 in 2022 sure i that's our goal chandrayaan 2 uh, we had that issue and we have solved all that issue and we built a new rock satellite uh, called chandrayaan 3 with certain struggardness improvements now the testing of those those uh, features are now going on we want to complete all the simulation tests gain confidence to see that yes we are ready to go for the launch and uh, the approach is to work on a you know on a very energetic mode with enthusiasm now to complete the mission this year itself so vikram back with four engines or five engines see the vikram there were certain anomalies issues with regard to the architecture the configuration something and the technical committee has really reviewed and given certain suggestions on how to strengthen it ruggedize it and all those features included including the engine change so four engines now. yes and and going forward see there is a lot of talk of uh, new space yes. and how startups and industry needs to contribute which already it has isro has nurtured so many beautiful industries mm-hmm. and and how will it take it how do you want to take it further see the industry has been the backbone of our space program but the technology continue to remain within isro so this is something that we want to break uh, we want industries to and understand the technology of space technology both in rockets and satellite maybe in applications as well they want to we want them to take on this mantle of building this not becoming manufacturers or assembly team etc 
So not the, vendors, but vendors. suppliers of full vehicle. Full vehicle. I won't call it them suppliers. I will rather say they are system engineers, they are designers, they are the owners of this uh, in the due, to, uh, you know, the coming years. But it may not happen all on a sudden. It is. Yeah, but EOS four mm. was assembled by industry. the alpha design technology is limited so you have a certain now track record of private industry participation it is true for uh, the rocket also this time pslv when it was launched its harnessing its wiring its integration was done by another industry oh. so uh, please understand that this type of work is going on uh, throughout the, uh, the 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 history of isro giving more and more assignments to the industry to take on but what i am looking at is not this i am looking at them to build their own spacecraft by their own core design strength by their own rocket and using their own core strength and own it and provide services to this country through their satellites this is the vision we have to have and and, and you have helped at least two startups i know you nurtured in that direction yeah. are startups ready to take on the big challenges you know i am seeing them really doing fantastic uh, work uh, the the inspiration within them is really really great and the energy energy is great and they are also getting the money needed to do the work see is, see energy is one part but rocket business is a very tough thing you yes. need lot of investment Correct. you need of lot of technology knowledge and uh, getting it to the right at the time is a very tough so they need many support system in place one is from people who have the knowledge the te- testing and other facilities which are there in the disposal of isro must be made available to them and they need systems which they cannot even touch today because there are systems which will take long gestation right. time to de- sometimes they have to be supplied by us to make them you know successful we have set all these plans in ready and we are working with them to make sure they succeed see i am seeing the reform is basically not to make uh, the organization of indian space research organization great but the entire space infrastructure economy of this country really grow a space ecosystem ecosystem involves technology products the business the money i think all of this have to grow and also we need a space law see we need a space policy first of all so the policies include various elements of policy we had uh, earlier communication satellite communication policy we had remote sensing policy now we are looking at a, an all um, encompassing single space policy which will address remote sensing data policy communication policy of uh, now engagement with the uh, user segments Uh, technology transfer policy space transportation policy human space flight policy space exploration policy uh, then fdi policy no these all these policies we put under single umbrella and we are building a space policy with all the stakeholder consultations so that this can be issued as a you know, national space policy correct and, and and we also need some kind of a liability regime because no, when private sector comes in it's an issue because right now all the liability is taken by the government and the taxpayer but when a private player comes in who takes the liability if something goes wrong how will that be addressed see this is addressed to the reforms process we have created a new entity called in space uh, and that entity is going to be an autonomous entity which will look at two important things one is regulation and another is the the promotion so the regulation involves allowing uh, new actors non governmental entities to come in and then start working on rockets satellites or applications and it will be approved or licensed for them to do and the the type of responsibilities which we need to take the state need to take will be handled through the in space regulation mechanism so that if you make a launch and there is a collateral damage on how the damage you know and similarly handling the objects which are space objects who will own do so on what are the control regime etc will be defined by a space law and this has to be enacted which is very very important before we take up further Yes how soon can we see it coming into the yeah, parliament we are hot on top of it the space um, uh, policy has been reworked in this last uh, one month time based on the direction of the space commission we have almost ready we'll be presenting again the space act which was earlier there in draft form which was dis- circulated distributed has now rewritten to reflect the reform uh, which has actually happened the in the in space and insil coming up how this has to be relooked so that is being done So I believe in another one month's time also I will be able to bring out the draft for discussion further. So 2022 and beyond looks very promising. Always it was. You know, Palavji, say the space has always been inspiring and forward-looking organization activity. Really, see this is one of the uh, governmental entity who has actually worked on hardcore technology. 
and we are delivering the product so it is not simply talking and asking somebody to do no never it is not a contracted contracting agency it is the core developing agency which looks at where is the need user need and how to translate the user need into some sensors how to put that sensor in a satellite how to launch the satellite using an enhanced capability a launch vehicle so it's an end to end solutions so we have people who handle user understanding to launching them precisely so this is the way it has been built now so the 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 primary goal as i see is to nurture this to remain very active and delivering it is not easy for any nation of this nature to have this capability please understand that when our forefathers in space technology sarabhai and thawan looked at this at that time nobody ever believed that india can have this capability when you have it today don't see it that as a it's a just a, you know a very easy thing it is never an easy thing so to have such a knowledge such a skill in set of people is something that we need to treasure we need to nurture we need to make sure that it is being taken forward and transfer to higher group of people more group of people so that it becomes widespread our activities happens not only in a governmental organization it happens in private entities the way the it's revolution has happened we want to see the space economy revolution happen in this country and india can benefit from your genial and much loved leadership capability see it is some it is a history will tell about that see as uh, i have been working here in uh, rocket technology for as many years 36 plus years and we have done something really phenomenal fantastic work in terms of rocket uh, with the help of my my elder seniors and my coworkers and the current set of yeah. juniors and staff which loves you Uh, naturally that see the love is always there in our system we loved our old no our previous generation had a great respect for what they did and we generate the respect through supporting and mentoring our youngsters this is our role i believe as a le- leader of the organization the first and topmost priority is to create the next layer of leadership and i am going to work on it to create that this uh, the vision and the spirit of the space te- you know, technology in this country is never gone down so reaching for the skies naturally that's a very good phrase to use reaching for the skies but keeping your foot strong on the ground so that was dr s somanath the new chairman of indian space research organization and the secretary of the department of space saying isro wants to go for the skies but keep its foot on the ground the application part of isro's work is simply superb from monitoring floods fisheries disaster management and going to moon and mars all of that has happened because of isro which i have said many times is like an island of excellence in a sea of mediocrity which we see around us and it hopes to create more glory in times to come more power to the young engineers and scientists at isro in new delhi palav bagla